Hi, in this video we're going to solve mechanics paper from October-November 2022. Okay, the first question is about the projectile motion and I will quickly draw a diagram. So we start from the ground and we will have to find the initial velocity u. And we know that after 3 seconds the particle is going to reach the greatest height. So t equals to 3 seconds. And we also know that at the highest point, velocity equals to zero. So that means we can use it in the Suvat equation, v equals to u plus a t. Since it's a projectile motion, we know that our acceleration is 10 meter per second squared and it's pointing downwards. So I'll take it with a minus sign. And from here we can find that u equals to 30. I'll give this as my final answer. Now the question b is about the greatest height itself. And again I'm going to use the Suvat equation, s equals to u t plus 80 squared over 2. We already know that u is 30 and t equals to 3, so I'll just substitute all of that into the equation. I got 45. Alright, let's move on to question 2. And again I'm starting with a diagram. So there is a box and the mass, mass of the box is 5 kilograms. The angle of inclination is 20 degrees. The box is being pulled at a constant speed of 1.8 meters per second. So let's call it uh, u equals to 1.8. And the time is 15 seconds. And we also have a frictional force of 40 newtons. Okay, so first we'll have to find the change in uh, potential energy of the box. And for that we'll have to find the height. So first of all, I will find the distance the box travels along the plane. And for that I'll multiply velocity because it's constant by the time. So that gives me 1.8 multiplied by 15. And that is 27. Next we can use trigonometry to find the height. And for that I'm going to use sine, and say so sine 20 equals the opposite, which is the height, over the hypotenuse, which is 27. So therefore the height is going to be 27 times sine 20. And that equals to 9.235. And then we can find the potential energy. It is mgh, m is 5, g is 10, and the height is 9.235. So all in all, I got 461.7 joules. And I will keep that as the answer. All right, let's have a look at the question B. Find the work done by the pulling force. Uh, as we all know, work is going to be force times the distance traveled. And the only problem is that we don't really know the pulling force. Now again, let's look at the diagram. And we know that uh, the box is traveling with a constant speed. So that means that all forces are balanced, or their sum equals to zero. Okay, and for that I will split the forces on x axis. We've got the weight of the box, which is 50 newtons. I'm going to draw the vertical line. And this angle here is 20 degrees. Now what I'm looking for is the x component of 
um, the weight, which is this red uh, vector. Again, we can use trigonometry. We know the hypotenuse. It's 50, 90 degrees. And uh, the x component, the one we're looking for, is opposite of the angle of 20. So that will be 50 uh, sine 20. Now, let's write down the net force on x-axis. I will take 50 sine 20 with the negative sign. Then we also have the force of resistance, minus 40. And then we also have the pulling force, which acts in the direction of x-axis, so therefore I will take it with a positive sign. And we know that the sum equals to zero. And from here we can find the pulling force. Which is 57.1 newtons. And here we go, we are ready to find the work, which is 57.1. Multiplied by the distance traveled. It's 27, as we found in the previous question. And all in all, we got 1,541 joule. All right, next question is about the equilibrium. And we'll have to draw a nice and clear diagram. So we're looking for the normal force, and we're looking for the force of tension. Let's draw both of them starting with the force of tension. Now the normal reaction is going to be perpendicular to the surface. So let's draw a tension to the circle. And the normal reaction, which is perpendicular to that tangent. And now I want to take uh, the tangent and the line perpendicular to the tangent as my x and y axis. So let me continue this line and it will go through the center of the circle because tangent is perpendicular to the radius. And that is my x axis. And that's the y axis. Now we also have the weight of the ring which is acting vertically down, and the weight is 40. Now, to split all the forces into x and y axis, we will also have to find this angle between, uh, between the y axis and the weight of uh, the ring. And to do so, we can first find this uh, green angle. If we look at the picture, then uh, we can see that this angle, the green angle and the angle of 25, are making uh, C angles. Right there, co-interior. So that means the co-interior angle is going to be 180 minus 25, which is 155. Now, to find the angle we are looking at, uh, we'll have to realize that we have an isosceles triangle here. Because that's the radius, and this one is also radius. So that means this angle here is 25 uh, degrees. And as we all know, x and y axis are perpendicular. So we've got 90 degrees here. Now, finally, the angle we're looking for is going to be uh, 155 minus 25, minus 90, which is 40. So we have 40 newtons acting down, and the angle between the y-axis and the weight is 40 degrees. And now we are ready to split all the forces into x and y components. So on the, ax on the x axis, we've got the x component of uh, the force of tension, and the x component is adjacent to the angle of 25. So it is going to be t cosine 25. Next, we have the normal reaction. 
and it's acting in the opposite direction of x-axis. So I will take it with a negative sign. And finally, we also have the x component of the weight, which is going to be this red vector. It is opposite of the angle of 40. So that is going to be multiplied by sine 40 degrees. And I will also take you to the minus because it's acting in the opposite direction of x axis. Now the whole system is in the equilibrium, so the sum of forces should be equal to zero. And I will do the same for y axis as well. First of all, we have the y component of the force of tension, it's this vertical uh, orange line. And this is opposite of the angle of 25 degrees. So I'll have to multiply by sine 25. I got T sine 25. We also have the Y component of the weight. And it's adjacent to the angle of 40 degrees. So I'll multiply by cosine. And we'll take it with a negative sign because the y component of the weight is in the opposite direction of y axis. So minus. And again, that equals to zero because the system is in the equilibrium. Now, starting with the second equation, we can find T. I got 72.5 and then substitute it into the first equation. And I got approximately 40. So tension equals to 72.5 newtons and a normal reaction is 40 newtons okay next question is about sewage equations and again i'm starting with the diagram i got a straight line let's say here t equals to zero t equals to one two three and four. Now we know that the particle traveled 52 meters during the second <laughs> second of its motion. So it means from t equals to one to t equals to two, the particle traveled 52 meters. And now likewise from t equals to three to t equals to four, the particle traveled 64 meters. And we're looking for u, initial velocity, and the acceleration. Now we're going to use the formula, one of the Seward equations, uh, s equals to ut plus at squared over 2. Now for the 52 meters, I will substitute t equals to 2, uh, and that will give me the distance traveled from t equals to 0 to t equals to 2, and then I will have to subtract the distance traveled from t equals to zero to t equals to one. So basically I'm doing s of two minus s of one. Now that will be four a over two plus two u. That's when t equals to two. Now subtract uh, u and a over two. This is when t equals to 1, and the result should be equal to 52. And I will do the same for s of 4 and s of 3. That's 8a plus 4u. That's when t equals to 4. And I'll subtract. Oh, sorry, 3u. 
10, 9, 8 over 2. Because that's when t equals to 3. And that is 64 according to the question. And now we have two simultaneous equations. Let's simplify them a little bit. So for the first one, I got 3a over 2 min, uh, plus u equals to 52. And the second one will give us 7a over 2 plus u equals to 64. Now, I'm going to subtract the first equation from the second one. So I'm just going uh, that way. I got 2a equals to 12. That gives us a equals to 6, and now let's substitute it into the first equation. So 3 times 6 over 2 plus u equals to 52. And from here, u equals to 43. And I will write the answer. a equals to 6 and u equals to 43. Okay, next one is pretty easy, since we know that u equals to 43, and a equals to 6. We can now use the Seward equation, s equals to ut plus a t squared over 2, and just substitute all the numbers in there. So, 730 it is. Okay, question 5, and we're going to start with the diagram again. We have a straight line, two points A and B, and two particles X and Y. And we know that both of them start from rest. Right, so we're giving their accelerations, so that means we can find their velocities, because velocity would be the integral of acceleration. Now let's integrate 12, t plus 12. Sorry, that's t, uh, 12 t squared over 2 plus 12 t. Simplified. And technically we do have to add c, in this case, uh, c is going to be the initial velocity, which is equal to zero, so no need for t uh, for c. Now let's find the velocity of y, and again I'm going to integrate 24 t minus 8 dt, which is 24 t squared over 2 minus 8 t. So 12 t squared minus 8 t, and again there is no need for c because initial velocity equals to zero. Now, we know that uh, when the particles collide, their velocities are equal. So I'm going to equate both of them and solve for t. 6t squared minus 20t equals to zero. I will factorize. and get either t equals to 0, or t equals to 20 over 6, which is 10 over 3. And obviously we're going to use 10 over 3, because when t equals to 0, those particles are not colliding. Now, moving on, from the velocity, we can find the displacement, because Displacement is going to be the integral of velocity. So first let's find displacement of uh, particle x. I will integrate 6t squared plus 12t. Again, in this case, uh, c is the initial displacement. And I would say that uh, our origin is going to be at point A. So A is going to be the origin. And when t equals to zero, 
displacement of x from origin is zero. So c equals to zero. Now let's integrate uh, velocity of the particle y. So the integral of 12 t squared minus 8 t. And that is going to be 12 t cubed over 3 minus 8 t squared over 2. And then this time we actually need c because that is going to be the displacement of particle y from the origin when t equals to 0. And that displacement is equal to a b. That's exactly what we are looking for. Now, when the particles collide, that means uh, displacement of x equal to displacement of y. And we also know that this happens when t equals to 10 over 3. So now I will substitute t equals to 10 over 3 into both s x and s y, and I will make them equal. And now we can rearrange it and find a b. I got 1000 over 27, which is approximately 37. Okay, for the next question, we can use the results from question A. We know that Sx, displacement of the particle x, is equal to 2t cubed plus 6 t squared and the displacement of particle y from the origin is equal to 4t cubed minus 4t squared plus ab. And now we know that ab equals to 36. Now let's see what happens after 3 seconds. Displacement of particle x is 108 meters. And the displacement of the particle y is also 108 meters. So therefore, they are at the same point. That means they collide. Okay, and here comes the next question. Again, I will start by drawing the sketch. I have a car. And the mass of the car is 1,750 kilograms. We've got a trailer, or a car caravan, and the mass is 500 kilograms. They are connected. And there's also resistance to their motion which is 650 for the car and 150 for the trailer. So first we know that the velocity equals to 24 meters per second. And we also know that the velocity is constant. So that means there's no acceleration. And we'll have to find the driving force of the car. Now, since the acceleration is zero, that means the driving force of the car is just enough to compensate for the resistance. So it means the driving force equals to 650 plus 150, and that equals to 800 newtons. Now, we can use the formula power equals to driving force times velocity. And we'll get 19,200 watts.
That's it for the first part of the question. And now we know that uh, the power is suddenly increased to 40 kilowatts. So power equals to 40,000. But the velocity of the car cannot suddenly increase. So velocity is still 24. So now that means we can change our equation for uh, the driving force and the velocity. And replace V with 24. So 24 times F equals to 40,000. And from here we can find a driving force. I got 5,000 over 3. Now let me quickly draw the sketch again. And to find the acceleration and the tension, we're going to use the second Newton's law. Basically, the sum of forces equals to mass times acceleration. And we can write the second Newton's law uh, for the car and for the caravan separately. Let's start with the car. So the driving force is 5,000 over 3. Uh, the tension is acting to the left, so I will take it within minus. There's also force of resistance, which is 650, again, with a negative sign. And that should be equal to mass times acceleration. And a very similar for the caravan. Now, the force of tension, if you look at the caravan, is acting to the right. So I'll take it with a plus. Resistance is opposing the motion, so minus. And that equals to mass of a caravan times its acceleration. And now we have simultaneous equations. So first, let's simplify it a little bit. Uh, starting with the first one, I got 3050 over 3. Minus t equals to 1750a. And the second remains unchanged. And now we can add up those equations term by term. And here's what I get. And from here we can find A. That's 52 over 135. All that is approximately 0 0.385. Now, we can substitute it, let's say, into the second equation and find t. So t would be 150 plus 500a. I'll substitute it and I'll get that. Which runs to 343 newtons. And that will be my answer for that question. Okay, the new question and the new diagram. Now we're traveling at an angle, let's call it alpha, and we know that sine alpha equals to 0 0.14. And here I'll represent the car and the caravan as one object, and the combined mass is 2,250 kilograms. Have a driving force. And we also have the resistance, which combined gives us 800 newtons. There's also weight. So that's M times G. And I would also draw X and Y axis. Right, and this angle here is also alpha. Now, I'm going to write the second Newton's law the sum of all forces equals to MA, on x-axis, starting with the driving force. Next, we have 800 newtons opposing the motion, so I'll take it with a minus sign. And we also have the x component of the weights, which is here. 
this opposite of the angle alpha. So that's going to be minus. And I will have to multiply the weight of the car and the caravan by sine alpha. Now we know that uh, acceleration is zero. So here we go, equals to zero. Right, and from here we can find the driving force. It's going to be 800 plus 22500 times sine alpha, which is 0 0.14. And I got 3950. So that is the driving force. Again, let's use the formula power equals to the driving force times velocity. The driving force is 3950 times velocity. And that should be equal to 31,000. That's the power. And from here, it's easy to find the velocity, which is going to be 7.85 meters per second. OK, now it's time for the last question of this paper. So let's add up some more information to our diagram. We know that this section is smooth, so the coefficient of friction is 0. Let's also draw x and y axes. That's the weight of the particle, so 30 newtons. This angle here is alpha. And for this question, we're only concerned about the particle b. So again, we're going to write the second Newton's law uh, on x axis. So on x axis, we've got the force of friction which stops the particle from sliding. And we also have the x component of the weight, which is here. This opposite of the angle alpha. So that is going to be 30 uh, sine alpha. OK, so on x-axis, we've got the x component of the weight. I take it with the plus sign. Minus the force of friction. And that equals to zero. Now on y-axis, we've got the normal reaction and the y component of the weight, which is 30, cosine alpha. So we can write normal reaction minus 30 cos alpha equals to zero. Now, as we know, the force of friction equals to the coefficient of friction mu times the normal reaction. And from this equation, we can find the normal reaction, which is 30 cos alpha. So the force of friction becomes 30 times mu times cosine alpha. Now, let's substitute it into the first equation, and we'll get 30 sine alpha minus 30 mu cosine alpha. And that equals to zero. So first, let's divide by 30. And now let's divide by cosine alpha. So we get tangent alpha minus mu equals to zero. So that means mu equals to tangent alpha. And as we know from the question, tangent alpha equals to 3 over 4, which is 0 0.75. And that is exactly what we had to show. And now let's move on to the next one. I will first redraw the diagram. OK, so first of all, I want to find the velocity of the particle A just before it collides with the particle B. And for that, we can use conservation of energy. So mgh should be equal to mv squared over 2, and v is the velocity of the particle just before the collision.
Now we know that g equals to 10. And we're gonna find h in terms of x. Because h is the opposite of the angle alpha. So that means we can multiply x by sine alpha. And that should be equal to v squared over 2. Now we also know that tangent alpha equals to 3 over 4. And for later we're going to use sine alpha and cosine alpha. So sine alpha is going to be 3 over 5, and cosine is going to be uh, 4 over 5. Okay, now we're ready to substitute sine alpha into this equation, and we'll get 10 times 3 over 5 times x equals to v squared over 2. Now from here we can make v the subject of the formula, so it's going to be v squared equals to 20 times 3x over 5, which is 12x, and then take the square root to find v. And that is velocity of a just before the collision. Now, for the second part, let's find the velocity of the combined particle right after the collision. So that will be velocity of the first particle times its velocity, uh, square root of 12x, equals to 4.5, that's the combined mass, times the combined velocity. I'm using the momentum conservation here. And from here we can find that u equals to square root of 12x over 3. Now for the third part of the motion, when they move together, we are probably going to use acceleration. And for that we will have to write the second Newton's law, the, far, the sum of all forces, equals to mass times acceleration, and we'll consider our x-axis. So on x-axis, we have the x component of the weight, which is going to be 45 sine alpha. We also have the force of friction. And that should be equal to mass, which is 4.5, times the acceleration. Now the force of friction is going to be mu times the normal reaction. So all in all we get 45 sine alpha minus uh, 0 0.75, which is mu, and the normal reaction is going to be uh, weight, 45, times cosine alpha. And now we can substitute sine alpha and cos alpha into this equation, since sine alpha is 3 over 5, cos alpha is 4 over 5. And all in all, I got 4.5 times a equals to 0. So that means acceleration is equals to 0. Okay, so that means we have constant velocity. And finally, we know that in the final uh, part of the motion, we travel 4 meters in 2 seconds. And the velocity is equal to square root of 12x over 3. So we can make the equation velocity times time equals to the distance. So basically 2 times square root of 12x over 3 equals to 4. Now let's solve it for x.
and we got x equals to 3. That is going to be the final answer for that question. All right, and now it's the very last question. Find the energy loss. Right, so initially we have only potential energy of particle A and particle B. So the initial potential energy of particle A is going to be the mass, 1.5, times the height, which is 7, uh, sine A, times G. So let's calculate, it's going to be 15 times 7, and we know that sine A equals to 3 over 5. So that's 63, that's particle A. Now for the particle B, we're going to have 3 mass, times g, times the height of the particle b, which is uh, 4, sine alpha, so 3 over 5, and that equals to 72. Now add it up, and we get 135. Now for the final energy, we've only got kinetic. That's going to be the kinetic energy of the combined uh, particle, which is mv squared over 2, and the combined mass is going to be uh, 4.5 v squared over 2, and uh, we found the velocity in the previous question, square root of 12x over 3, now substitute it. And we already know the value of x, which is 3. Okay, so I got 9. And now the loss is going to be the difference between those two. So 135 minus 9, which is uh, 126 joules. And that is the answer, 126 joules. Okay, and that was the final question of this paper. I hope you found this video useful. And I will see you next time. Bye.